Yo, it's Hollywood Unlocked and Censored. I'm Jason Lee. Hey, it's DJ Damage. All right, so listen, if you're streaming this on iTunes, that's great, but you can also stream us on iHeart, Google Play, Spotify, and watch us over at YouTube. Um, listen, I've selected uh, the female co-host to replace Melissa here on the show. I'm not no. going to tell you who she is yet, nor am I going to show you the photos. But we just did the photo shoot, uh, and uh, I think this is probably our best one. What do you think? For the photo shoot, yeah. I, I love the vibe. I love the creative. Shout out to everybody that was a part of it. I had a great time. Uh, I think people are really going to like it. Yeah, and you know, like here's the deal, people. Let me just tell you. I don't like... Uh, posing for photos, mm -hmm. I will tell you that we shot our photos in probably 30 minutes. Yeah, for sure. The it was photos, in the photos, not the video now. We did a whole bit. Like, I felt like Jay-Z at that motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie. Which video? Like Big Pimpin'? You felt like Big Pimpin'? Because you was on your boss status. I seen you. When I walked out there and you was kind of doing your thing on your own, I was like, okay, Jason out here, you know, catching the vibe. He's you know, people are saying I lost weight and I'm starting to look like Drake and Chris Brown now. I don't know if that's a compliment or not, because uh, I personally think I'm cuter than both put together. But I will say, I, when I when we got there on set with, with, the, with all the different theatrics going mm -hmm. on, smoke screen, directors, I, I felt for a second, um, I felt what Drake feels every time that he goes out on stage. You felt the euphoria. I definitely felt it. I'm definitely thinking of picking up the mic. Okay, sure. so so we gonna expect some because you rapped on the, uh, your intro for gagging, so it's not listen, like you're uh, too far off. I seen what you li do. Listen, I'm getting ready to shoot uh, a video for gagging. I have an amazing uh, feature on the song. I'm now in the process of uh, deciding if I want to drop a mixtape or or an album or an EP. I don't even know what what's what you know, but I'm thinking of putting together a collaborative product that I can sell. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you know, hey, listen, I feel like anybody can be anything they want at any time. They just got to put in the work and they got to be consistent and they got to be serious about it. So after I did the first song, it was like, shoot, you know, I want a Grammy. But the thing is, Jason, you know, on your spare time, you only listen to gospel music. So on this this mixtape, this album you put out, is it going to take a left turn from the gagging single to gospel? Well, what are you, you going to hit us with? Listen, listen, I have been playing a lot of pop smoke. I'm in these hip hop streets. <laughs> I, I know the new lingo. You know what I mean? Like it ain't, it ain't that, it ain't that far that I was there. Damage. Okay. It don't take a lot to take me back to the streets of Stockton. You feel me? Oh, so, okay. Uh, you know, I, I have my concept already put together, but you know, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do. But no, seriously, I've been on my fitness game. I'm down 68 pounds. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to put this photo up right here that I just put on my Instagram and leave it up just for a quick second, just so you can get into it. Now, yeah, I don't have abs, so you ain't got to tell me I don't have abs. But, you know, I'm, I've, I'm falling in love with the process of transforming my body. I built a gym in my house, as you know. You've not mm -hmm. yet to come over to Thaquinox. Is, is it officially done? I was waiting for you to put up the, the imagery and, you know, you have mirrors you wanted to do. Uh Jim is done. You didn't. You didn't say yo membership starts now. You know, usually the, 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 there's there's no grand opening. There's it's COVID, <laughs> nigga. There's a whole pandemic. I'm not gonna have an opening and a ribbon cutting to like the garage gym. <laughs> the only thing I have to do is I have to put up one more fan and I got to put up the lighting and maybe the sound. But other than that, the gym is open. We've been in there every day. All right. Well, I'll be in there for sure. All right, so uh, if you haven't gotten into my new show, Gagging with Jason Lee, that's also available streaming, so please go check that out. It's mm -hmm. streaming on all platforms, and we're on YouTube doing numbers. Uh, we're perfecting our production, so if you watched the last show, it is what it is. But by the time you get this, we, 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 will, be, we will have been uh, uh, fixed everything, so you mm -hmm. should check that out. But yeah, I'm excited to introduce the new co-host to the show, and... You know, there was a lot of discussion internally of whether or not we would have another host because I started the show four years ago with Melissa and then mm -hmm. Gio. And then, you know, we've had some rotation. And, you know, I've always said that Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored would never be the show that it was without Melissa, at least because she started it from day one. And so uh, I'm excited to uh, reintroduce the show to our audience and introduce the new co host And Damage is still rocking with me. So uh, I'm excited for that. I'm excited now, too, man. Now, you speak about gospel music. Uh, we have one of my favorite gospel artists coming out. Her name is uh, coming on today. Her name is Leandria Johnson. And the thing I love about Leandria, those of you that don't watch gospel music or those of you that have clicked in here to see me and Damage talk about something crazy, Leandria Johnson is literally 
the person that we all have been and that some of us still are. We all have been in places where we have felt like we lost it all and then she got it all and then she struggled with it all. And I, I have been connected to her through her music for a long time. Uh, she's been one of the sources of gospel inspiration to my spirit and uh, continuously fills me up. And so I hope that everybody you know, tunes in and stays locked into Leandria so we can have a conversation. And I'm not sure, Damage, I know you've listened to her new song, Hold On. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you? Ha, are you tied into the gospel world? Do you listen to gospel music? I, I'm not tied into the gospel world, but I definitely love gospel music. You know, I didn't come up um, Christian, but I feel like anything that moves people to be positive, that gives them hope, I'm all for that. I don't care what background you come from. It's hard to deny like the beauty of gospel music. I love the passion. I love what they're saying. And I love how it influenced people. So uh, the songs you play for me, and I've listened to gospel music, but I don't follow it, you know. But when it comes on, I feel inspired, you know. And the music you play for me from this artist, beautiful, beautiful. See, and I think that's a great perspective and a great way to look at it because I never thought about, it, thought about it like that for people who may not be Christian or, you know, who may not have, mm-hmm. who may have grew, grew up with different faith and that didn't listen to that type of music that... You know, it really is good, feel good music. You know, even even um, you know Pharrell's song "Happy." It's not a gospel song, but it almost gives you that same feeling yeah. of you know being happy and and being uplifted. And so for me, that's what gospel music has done. And I've used it as my channel, really, and my connection to God. Because once I can feel the music, then I can receive the word. And um, so I've never been able to meet Leandra, never been able to see her live, and I've never been able to connect with her. But I've always wanted to, and so I'm glad we're gonna talk to her. And so she's already here. We might as well just get into it now. Hey, you know, I I said this before we got started off camera. I said, you know, um, everybody knows I'm a heathen, so they can't believe how much I love God and love gospel music. (laughs) And then, you know, on top of that, uh, you know, I've been privileged to get to know Karen Clark Sheard and and you're one of my favorites. And so I'm really happy that we have a chance to catch up because I've never met you. Wow. Wow. So good to be here. (laughs) So the one thing I was telling DJ Damage about you was just, um, you know, where I fell in love with you, where I think most of America and the world fell in love with you in the gospel world um, was on Sunday Best. Um, You know, you came in extremely vulnerable. You let cameras see you in a way that a lot of people that have vanity do not want people to see them. You had, you know, basically just lost everything and um, came in in some flip flops with socks on. Now you know that was a cardinal rule you wasn't supposed to do. But you know you you showed you showed right. a level of vulnerability <laughs> that we don't really see from a lot of people. Um, when you look back at that now, what do you what do you think? Wow, that um, anything is possible. Anything is possible if you just put your mind to it. You know, you can you can achieve anything you want to achieve. Just got to keep moving forward. So it's like, wow, it's a big wow moment. Did you go in with the confidence though? Like, because I'm sure you knew you could sing. And I'm sure once you, once you open your mouth and people heard a little bit, because I know I've never watched Sunday Best before or after you. Um, I know when I saw you the first time and heard you, I was, I knew immediately you were a star. Did you know going in, did you have the confidence that you were just going to slay everybody in there? Uh, no, not at all, because of what I had, I had to hear for a lot of hours, you know, oh, they're going to judge you by your appearance and all that kind of stuff. So I just thought it was just going to be me singing before them, but I just, you know, I didn't, my appearance, I didn't think so, you know, so, um, but I just went in for the guts, you know, just went in for the guts, you know, so I was like, okay, this is mm-hmm. me. This is all I have right now, so. Here I am. <laughs> Can you tell me more about that day? Like, how did you find out about the audition process? Like, how did that all come about? Because, you know, those things sometimes is last minute. Did you, you know, what was that? Yeah, it was definitely last minute. Um, I think um, I had just lost my house and my landlord, you know, went into foreclosure because he wasn't mm. paying his mortgage. So I got kicked out of the house, you know, just, just like that, you know three kids and I was like, man, so that was my whole focus trying to figure out what am I going to do? And my best friend at the time, she was like, you know, why don't you try out for Sunday best? I was like, I don't have anything, you know? So, um, I made a few phone calls and five people were there to, you know, assist me. And I went, drove 10 hours to Louisiana from Orlando, Florida, 
my uncle, my brother, rest in peace, you know, and my best friend at the, at the time. And we just went for, we just went for whatever, you know, so um, that's how it pretty much happened, you know, so she was, she was definitely the, the driving force for me to, to do that. See, so, and I'm familiar with you um, having lost the home, having the three kids, being in your car, you had the garbage bags, you came in with the flip flops. Um, now, I'm always interested in the journey before the world knows who you are, right? Like, I was recently in Miami, and I ended up um, at the weekend's party. And I have been a fan of the weekend and fan of his music, but I didn't really know his story before he became famous. And he told me he was homeless, um, and that then he had gotten a job at American Apparel and was playing his music in the store while he was working. And just the humility of, you know, the before stardom, um, before... You fell on hard times. What were you doing ha while you had that voice? Um, my mom had a daycare uh, facility. So I was one of the main teachers at my mom's daycare facility. Um, so, you know, doing what, what four, four year olds, you know, preparing them mm -hmm. for kindergarten. So, um, yeah, right in the church, you know, just with the kids, Miss Leandria. <laughs> hey, Miss Leandria. <laughs> so, so you had to have, you had to have a lot of yeah, patience with four that. years old, be, four year olds, because I went to one uh, second grade classroom to talk to the kids, and they wore me out in two hours, <laughs> and I've never been back. Yeah, <laughs> yes, definitely having having patience, and um, but getting to know all of those personalities, and you know, it was it was a it was a good moment though. That's that that was a good moment. Oh, took me back. <laughs> took me back. But, uh, yeah. Wait, so, and then, you know, you have been, you know, notably one of the most successful people to come out of the show. Um, you've won a Grammy. You have been on the stage with all the greats. Um, the song that you have, Jesus, as you know, I mean, as you probably know, is my, one of my favorites. And it's so crazy, you know, talking to you because there's been a lot of intimate times that I've spent with your music getting me through things that I was uh, struggling with. Another one of your performances that are on YouTube that I've literally watched. I've watched all your performances on YouTube. Uh, even when you sung Be Grateful with the notes, I was like, why does she have the notes? The girl knows the song. She don't need them. She just starts screaming. We all going to fall out anyway. But um, when you were at the conga room for Jamie Foxx's Foxhole and you sang Jesus, the extended version, and you just... you. You just effortlessly killed it. Where does that come from? I don't know how that happened because I was pregnant, you know, and I was like first trimester pregnant and I was sick as a dog and I did not want to come. I didn't even want to go. But um, management at the time was, was like, you know, this is a one in a lifetime opportunity, you know, just come on. And it just so happened to work, you know, from the strength of the audience that were that was there that night, you know, something different about the audience that was there. I felt their energy and I was no longer sick. We became one in in the energy in the room and it was magical. It just became a magical moment. So um, that was amazing. 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 Just to <laughs> piggyback off what Jason said, you know, a lot of people listen to your music to get through their hard times. Um, when you were going to Sunday's Best and th that time period where you were going through a lot, what was some music you listened to that got you through? Oh, wow. Um, I would say at the time, um, hearing, you know, my female mentor, Dorinda Clark Cole, you know, um, I Am Still Here and It's By The Grace Of God, you know, and then Mariah Carey, There's A Hero, you know, um, songs like that. And, um, it was, yeah, and then, you know, I had to pop in a little SWV at the same time, you know. Just, you know well, we all get, we all get weak in the knees, so, I mean. <laughs> yes. know? And so, yes. and see, this is the thing I love about you, too. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of a lot of contemporary gospel. Like, I'm trying to get into some of the contemporary stuff. Like, I like Tasha Cobbs. I love Kiera. Um, but you mm -hmm. still have, like, you... And I don't know if this is fair to say, you tell me, although you have some contemporary, you have a lot of traditional music and sound in your music, right? Is that fair to say? Yes, yes, yes. Why, yeah. why, did, why did people get away from that? I feel like people, is it people are trying to keep up with the times or not really, because I feel like traditional music, if I walk in a church, I told this to Erica Campbell, when I walk in her church with Warren, I feel the spirit. If I walk into church and the music ain't there and I don't feel something, I can't sit in there because I'm just not going to receive the message. Um, why do you think people have gotten away from traditional? 
gospel? Um, to be honest, I would say uh, because of the culture is, is like kind of it's different, you know, and a lot of people are more into the happenings of things. You know, I, I would say, you know, the, the what's what's new, what's next, you know, who's going to be the next uh, the next leader, the next pioneer, you know, or, or it's not just traditional that's inside of me. It's more to that, you know, or trying to go mainstream, you know, or be mainstream, you know, so it, it's all, it's all with all in that too. Also, you know, I mm-hmm. feel that that's my answer. Mm-hmm. What about um, Kanye West? I mean, I've been to see his um, gospel. I've been to his church or whatever the, he calls that a few times. Um, I've watched his performances, his music. I, I love his music. Um, have you heard him? What do you think about it? I've heard it and um, pretty dope to me, you know, his arrangements and, and how he's able to, you know, come in and be a part of our world. You know, um, it's just I think it's quite interesting. You know, I mean, you can't fault him. You know, you know, you know, he knows what he's doing. You know, it sounds great. You know, it's uplifting, you know, and it's something different, you know, and and it's not traditional, of course, but um it's his music is is dope. I mean, you have to give that to him. You gotta give that to him, you know. So But I did tell him though that he can't keep singing the Clark Sisters songs and not do a collaboration with the Clark Sisters. Now, cause here's the deal. You, you know, we talk about white people when they come into R and B music taking our music. Gospel music is it's its whole world. And I feel like if Kanye is going to sing uh, anything. If, if, if it's a run, you need to have the Clark sisters in that because then I think you really do bring the gospel community into what you're doing if it's legitimate. I would love to see you doing mm-hmm. something with him uh, or and because you've done something with Tyrese. I, I remember there was a performance you performed with him at an award show and yeah. you brought him from the secular world into the gospel world. Do you think there should be more c- cross collaborations between the two genres? I, I, I definitely agree with you on that. Yes, I, I feel that it's it's fair to both sides, you know, uh, to the to the supporters and the fans, you know, and um, I believe that can happen, you know, but it's up to the individual, of course. But I do agree with you on that. But, that, yeah, but so the gospel community tends to be very judgmental, right? Not just even yeah. not gospel music. I'm talking about the church community. And I'll say, you know, the thing I love about you is. You have shown the world who you are, and the world has been able to accept it, but it seems like the gospel community at some times and through some of your trials has not been able to accept it. How do you stay a loyal person to that community when you feel like they're only there for you when you're shining? I have to have my own relationship. I have my own relationship with with God, you know, and... um to be able to claim or profess, you know, Christianity or uh, being a part of the church community um, and be able to not be afraid to live life, you know, and not to be afraid of, to make mistakes, you know, to me, that's, that's a great thing. And it's a bold thing to do. And, um, but you have to be pure and honest and, and trust yourself. Trust the God in you, you know, not man, you know, and when you know that everyone is not perfect and you know that there are people out there that are, quote unquote, you know, they they straight. um, Somebody has to see that living this living in this life is what we do. We're going to make mistakes and we're not going to be perfect. But that doesn't, you know, say that we're less connected mm-hmm. to God, you know, or, you know, he can't use us or he can't, you know, shine through us because God is everywhere. God is not in those four walls, you know, and God is in every one, actually, to be honest, you know, but we have to know that we weren't taught that. We were taught everything, what not to do and what not to say and, and all where not to go, you know, and I grew up with that and I was tired and I was like, nah, this is, it has to be something more than what they're teaching me. It has to be, you know, so um, I'm here to let everyone know, you know, shine bright, you know, and reach for whatever you want to reach. And, you know, if you drop or you make a mistake, get back up. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do, you know, so. 
But it, but it is, isn't that my, judgment the judgment that keeps a lot of the millennials and the younger people away from the church, though? Because at the end of the day, yeah. you know, like you said, me, you, damage, we all have our own relationship with God, and that's who we're striving to uh, yeah. uh, to please, you know? And so it's sometimes the people that I think are just a little too hard. And then on top of that, when you have a person like you who clearly has the, the, control, the reach of the younger people... Uh, and they can see you mm -hmm. fall down and get back up and be stronger. That to me is really the testament yeah. of faith in God and what should drive people uh, to the church and to God, right? Right. I mean, definitely um, not even to, you know, the building because the church is the church is us. But, you know, when you're able to not fault God, you know, I'm learning to take full responsibility of my own actions. You know, if I'm drinking and I'm driving, I know the consequences. The devil didn't put me in that position. Leandria did, you know, and that's what happened, you know, so I had to learn how to take full responsibility of my actions and not say it's the enemy or it's the devil or oh, that was the devil child, you know, and that's what they teach us. So I'm learning uh, in a clear space. I have the power to put me where I want or don't want to be. We have the power to cause those things that be not as though they were. We have the power. You know, it's not about a uh, so much what a, somebody's preaching over the pulpit or, so, or what somebody is saying, you know, at that moment. We have to sit down and really realize that judgment is going to be, you know, they're going to judge, you know, they're going to say this and say that, but I can't dwell on that. I can't dwell on, on those things. There is somewhere that I need to be. You know, there is a deeper connection in the universe that I want to be in, you know, but we, they say, oh, oh she, now she's talking about the universe and all this kind of stuff, but it is the universe. God is the universe. So just because I say the universe, that doesn't mean I'm not talking about God, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's those little manipula, uh, manipula, little, you know my word that I'm trying to <laughs> the say. The manipulative. <laughs> yeah. It's, yes. That, you know, get people. You know, so, but yeah. Outside of the judgment, you know, even though you do gospel music, you're in the music industry. Um, personally, what is, was there ever a point in pursuing your music career? Did you feel like a conflict with your faith being in that music industry? Um, at one point, because I thought that I was only righteous by right doing. Mm. You know, and I couldn't connect that. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to connect something that didn't need to be connected. So I was like, okay, so what's going on? But the more I had time to spend in meditation with him, you know, he had to let me know you're not righteous, Leandria, by right doing. You're righteous because I said you are. And so take this gift that I've given you and give it to the world. Now, when you, you know, and just, just hands down, just give it to the world and just watch your seed grow. Mm -hmm. Watch your seed grow. If that answers your question. No, absolutely. So let me ask you a question. We were talking about the church and or and the gospel community sometimes not being forgiven. You know, um, Kim Burrell has been raked over the coals for her views on the homosexual community. Um, do you think they should forgive her? Absolutely. Absolutely. We all should be allowed to be forgiven, you know, and we all should forgive. You know, because at the end of the day, um, what was displayed publicly, there's a lot of things that are not displayed publicly and they're behind closed doors and everybody, somebody out there safe, somebody out there doing some, some, a lot of messed up, jacked up things, but they out there safe though, you know, and she's not, she got into a situation where it wasn't safe for her anymore because, you know, then she became attacked or whatever because of her opinion or because of her facts or whatever it was, you know, people had a right to speak their opinion. That's one thing that I know someone taught me. Everyone have their right to their opinion, you know, but at the end of the day, our focus shouldn't be what people do. Our focus should be how we treat people in what they're doing. That's my focus. So how... It's how I treat you. So how did you forgive the community who turned on you? Did you did you just forgive them and say, you know what, I'm gonna stay focused on me, my relationship with God, my my gift and my contribution, and just ignore them? Because it's kind of hard to ignore the haters. Like you're even though you're saved and you're right. sanctified and you're anointed and you can sing down, 
you still are a human being. You mm -hmm. still have children. You still You're have right. family. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And I didn't, I, it wasn't quick with me because it, it was definitely wasn't quick with me because I set the F bomb, you know, I, I just blew up and was like, F y'all, you know, and that was hurt. That was pain from years and years and years of lies of you telling me this. And, and then when I look at you, I see that, you know, so it just erupted out of me, you know, em an emotion of eruption, you know, and um, it took a while, even though when I said, okay, I forgive you, I, I really, no, I wasn't there because it's like, this shouldn't even be. Why are we doing this? Why are we having these conversations? Why are we kicking people out of the church because you they don't look the way you think they should look or smell the way you think they should smell or talk, act, all of that, you know? So um, I'm just now getting to a point where I'm, I'm trusting me. I'm comfortable with me. If I mess up tomorrow and it becomes viral, okay, they're going to say, they're going to talk or whatever, whatever. But it, I don't want it to be the same thing. You know, that's when it becomes a, like a huge little problem now, you know, if it's the repeated same thing over and over and over again. But if I mess up and I'm learning from my different experience, let that be with me and God. Well, li well listen, let me be very clear. Uh, I will always have your back over <laughs> here because I'm going to tell you your contribution to, uh, to me and to many people who watch you. Like I said, it's one thing to be a good singer, but to have an anointing and have that that special something that is is different, that it's a gift that everybody doesn't have, is something that I think we should all protect. I also think that, like mm -hmm. you know, I I know you you rose to fame really fast. Was that a contributing factor mm -hmm. in just everything happening? Absolutely, absolutely, because I went from here to there. So from here to there. No one was there to really t teach me the business side of anything. No one was there to teach me that, you know, there's some sharks out there and, you know, you're going to you're going to be caught doing this. Some people are going to bring you this. And it was just like I fell into the thing. It was a bigger church to me. It was no longer just the gospel world. It was a everything was a became a bigger church to me. So I was like, OK, and I didn't know who to trust. You know, so those that were closest to me at the time, you know, I just I said, we're going to do this thing together. But at the end of the day, you know, I guess I ended up being the bad person out of the whole situation or the one that's got a problem or she crazy or, you know, she this and that. But, you know, I mean, hey, I that ain't nothing new to me. You know, it ain't nothing new. So but yes, that that made they played a, a huge part. That played a huge, huge so, part. So <laughs> when you performed, never would have made it at the BMI Awards. And uh, or that showcase or whatever that was. And I mean, I love, uh, you know, the originator of that song. I will have I will mm -hmm. say uh, I listened to your version more uh, because it just I don't know it, your delivery of that song were, and, and the passion behind it and the fact that you were singing that way in front of everybody in that room and Yolanda Adams on the side who was living for you. Were you when you're in that type of performance, yes. are you? feeling it like are you feeling all of the stuff that you may have gone through or that you may have experienced while you're performing i am definitely feeling that at the moment but i'm also feeling everyone else's pain confusion frustration that's in the, the in that room you know so as i pour myself out i empty myself to be full you know and um it's just it's a journey and and it and, and in for, for a couple of seconds, you don't want to give all of yourself because you're like, okay, well, who who's sitting back there with their arms folded? Like, mm-hmm. Like, yeah, okay, whatever, yeah. <laughs> you know, but at that moment, at that moment, it's just somebody out there, whether it's one person, somebody's out there, they get it, you know? So I'm going to reach that one person, you know, and I'm going to be like, what's up? You know, we're going to do this thing together, you know? So that's that's a very powerful moment, you know, and I thank God to be able to share that with, with the world. Okay, so you went back to um, uh, Sunday's Best on the news stage at the Tyler Perry Studios because you know they got a budget now. They didn't build out a whole uh, experience. <laughs> um, and you and you did the, um, the song Deliver Me, which another song I've played, I've wore out. Um, how did that collaboration come about? And 
the performance again, every performance. And I'm not just saying this. People are probably like, oh, he's just saying. No, you, if you have never watched all of her performances on YouTube, she's one of the most consistent people performing. Uh, and you have to go watch it. But d deliver me. How did that come about? Again, I have to say Donald Lawrence to me is the true epitome of a brother in Christ. And this was after my drunken rant. And after I was done with the church, I was like, I'm done. I didn't want to do it no more, but he gave me a call and he literally like Rick, you know, reached his hand down and like picked me up and was like, nah, you ain't stopping here. You know, we're going to do this. We're going to do this song. And I want you to listen to this, to the words and put it inside of you. And no lie. I mean, it was so powerful. Um, what three takes, I believe. And I, everything that was in me, every, everything I just, dumped it right there on, on the record, just dumped it. And I didn't even know that the song would be as it is. I mean, of course it's going to be at a certain, you know, place because of Donna Lawrence, but that song is my national yeah. anthem. It's my anthem. Well, you know, for the rest of my life, the song is my anthem for the rest of my well, life. Well, and it came at a time where I think a lot of us are feeling that same sentiment, you know? Um, and, and I know... You know, you know, every day I wake up brand new. I really feel like I wake up. The first thing I say is I already know somebody going to try me today. So you might as well deliver. You're going to deliver me mm. now because if you don't, don't deliver me now, you're going to deliver me later. Um, but the song, right, right. but the song, the <laughs> choir arrangement, you know, um, him leading it. I mean, Kelly's reaction, the video really brings it even more to life. But it's such a special song. And I'm always interested to see how these things come back because he doesn't get a lot of credit for the work he's done with the Clark sisters and in the gospel community. I mean, he's really behind a lot of big songs that we all know and love. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Much respect. Shout out to you, Donald Yes. Lawrence. Much respect. So now hold on is another one. You know, the other hold on is in vogue. I love that song, but I was playing hold on all morning this morning as we prepared for the call. And I, again, I feel like the words to your music line up with, where you are in life and where you can maybe resonate to a lot of where other people are in life. Yes. So how, yes. how did that song Definitely. come about? And it's just self-explanatory. Well, my brother, my brother actually wrote this song 10 years mm. ago. I heard it. I sang it once, I think at, at the X essence festival. And at that moment, you know, I was doing my thing, you know, I wasn't praying to God like, like I should, you know, I mean, everything had this, had that, you know, we was doing this, doing that. So my connection with God wasn't even that strong. You know, I was doing things on my own. You know how it is when you, at that certain point in life, everything is going right. And then you just so happen to just wake up a couple of days without telling the Lord, thank you. That's where I was, you know, and I'm just being honest, you know, but God have a way of humbling you, you know, and bringing you back to reality. And now that same song, I have to sing and sing it from a place because there are people out here, especially what's going on in the world today, you know, want to give up and want to throw in a towel and all that kind of stuff. But God is not through with me yet. That's where it starts. I wanted to know, you know, musically, what, what kind of legacy do you want to leave, you know, with your music? Oh, wow. Um, hmm. Ooh. love you know any any and everything all things love you know and and being fearless when it comes to who you are on the inside and who you know that you are you know and um everyone who has a voice have a voice mm. you know and don't be afraid don't be afraid honey don't be afraid to live your life and 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 and, and be be happy be joyful you know embrace it Tell yourself, I can do all these things. You know what I'm saying? Just life, period. Live in life, period. You know, so I hope that was not too shallow, not too deep, but, you know, just right. Let me, let me ask you, what are, let me ask you a couple of things. What, what is the biggest lesson you've learned from the music business? Hmm. To, to pay attention and to invest in yourself. Look, take care of you first. Take care of you. Put you first, you know, and find out all things that you need to find out to make sure that at the end of the day that you ain't stuck out there 
in the cold or in the hot, however, you know, get your affairs in order because everybody got their business together. You'll be the only one out here still eating chicken wings, you know, because you have to, not because you want to, you know. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's the biggest lesson you've learned from life so far? Mm. That it's not promised. Life is not promised. So at the end of the day, make the best of it and, and get you together, get it together, you know, and, 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 and live in life, you know, embrace it, you know, do more in life than you think that you can do. Walk out there and talk to the trees, talk to the grass, you know, talk to the bushes, you know, talk to the animals, you know, do something different, embrace all things life. What's the biggest lesson you've learned from God? that I am way better than I think that I am. You know, I, I'm, 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 I'm a better person than I think that I am, mm. you know, in his eyes and the love is unconditional and he's everywhere. He's so much not like man, you know, and um, everything belongs to me. Everything belongs to me. Mm. The sun belongs to me. The moon belongs to me. The stars belong to me. Love belongs to me. I'm so freaking sorry. <laughs> no. Anyway. No, you're, you're fine. You've accomplished so much and you've overcome so much. Being a parent, what are some things you, you, you always say, I must instill in my children, you know, so the way they come up. You know, we always, I'm a parent myself, we always want to protect our kids and Make sure they don't go through the same things we go through. What are some things you instill in your children, you know, as they grow up? That, you know, not being forced to find out who you are, you know, and and not focusing on, you know, all things what you can't do, you know, but, you know, ex allowing them to experience what they experience, you know, I'm not forcing God on them. I'm not forcing them to go to church. I'm not forcing them to read no Bible. I'm not forcing them to fast and pray, even though I know that they say those are, you know, the fundamental things, you know, but allowing them to wake up in the morning and and speak or say what they want to say, how they feel, you know, express themselves. You know, one, allowing them to express themselves, you know, not be rude or anything, but just allowing them to enjoy the surroundings, you know, that's surrounding them, you know. So what do you say? Yeah. To, what do you say to other people who are out there, younger people who, you know, they may think they know God because they pray at, over a meal, but um, but want to have a stronger faith in God and want to develop a stronger connection to God? What do you? How do you suggest they go about that? Well, <clears throat> because, like you just said, praying over a meal is is not, you know, really a connection you know when you're connected with god the god in you you walk out of the house knowing that somebody may talk about you but you're okay with yourself you know you you know you don't you don't worry that's not on your mind about you know okay well what somebody is saying about this or what somebody's saying about that you are loving yourself and there's power in loving yourself you know and it starts there you know um it's, it's just a connection, you know, it's a connection in what you want to invest in. You know, what do you want to receive? What do you, whatever you want to receive, you have to definitely give. That's first, you know, and that's God. You know, God is love, you know, so God is peace. God is joy. God is happiness. So, you know, all good things, you know, you know, if that answered your question. Yeah, you know, know yeah, no, you did. But. You know, one question I've asked everybody from Cardi B to Jennifer Lewis to Amber Rose to whoever I've talked to is, what is the biggest misperception of Leandria Johnson? Well, I asked them of themselves, but I ask you, what do you think the biz biggest misperception is? Hmm. That I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, look, I, I it was just that. one. It was just one <laughs> reckless night on Periscope. I mean, can't be defined by one day in your whole life. You sure, know what I mean? We all been there. <laughs> what? 
Right. You know, that's what I'm saying. You know, because, you know, but if that, you know, other than that, um, that I'm, I guess, you know, that I, I'm, a, um, I'm afraid, I'm afraid to, you know, or what am I afraid of? You know, I'm afraid to, you know, get there or, or be that, you know, I don't know. Shoot, I ain't never had a chance to think about that question like that. Okay, well, let me, let me ask you this. What made you emotional when I asked you about God? Because at the end of the day, I turned my back on, on him. And, you know, really didn't have a, any reason, you know, because I got fed up with man. It had nothing to do with God, you know. And just the, the fact that I'm still here, um, I could have definitely been underneath the ground, you know, because of what I put on myself. You know, I could have caused others to be under the ground, you know, but he spared my life, you know. And I'm here to testify and I'm here to talk about it and... I can still continue being a mother for my children, you know, and um, still witness and, and be there for a stranger and someone else, you know, so. But doesn't that continue. make you even more powerful? Yeah, it does. It does. Because now you, you, you realize that you, you took him for granted. You took yourself for granted. You know, you took being a mother for, I took, being a mother for granted. I took being a daughter for granted, you know, a friend for granted, you know, a servant for granted, you know, shame on me, you know, but hey, I mean, I'm human, you know, but I'm, you know, I'm still here. And that's one of the best feelings in the world to be um, honored a, a second chance, another chance, I would say. Well, have you another have chance you, to get it? Back. Have you forgiven yourself, though? Because I mean, we forgave you. I, 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 I didn't skip a beat. Right. <laughs> I I did. I did. And the hesitation is because there are still times where I could find myself traveling back down that road and having to ask myself, why, 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 why even attempt, mm -hmm. you know, so but it's when you're used to doing something, you know, it's not that easy to stop doing, you know, so. Um, but I, I forgive myself you know, for, or, or applaud myself for, you know, continuing, you know, at least straightening out some things. So, well, listen, yeah. Leandra, you, um, you are a family to us over here. We love you. We will always be here to support you. And I, and I don't, you know, I don't know what people tell you on a daily basis. They may say, Oh, I love this. song, I love that. I just want to say on a personal spiritual level, my connection to God is typically through music. And you've been one of the very few people that have been with me. Even when I'm out here being mischievous in these streets and driving people crazy, I may still be listening to Leandra. Hey, that's your right. Yeah, though. you know. Yeah, but I just wanted to say, you know, we yeah, we love you and your... we appreciate you and, and and thank you for your contribution to gospel music and music in general because um you you know, even at your lowest moment, you're lifting a lot of people up. I hope you know that. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. And I thank you so much. And I love you guys, too. Thank you so of much. Of course. All right. So hold on and deliver me. If you haven't listened to it yet, you need to download it. You need to go watch the video for Deliver Me. Then you need to just go through every other Leandra video, mm -hmm. especially, I can't even think of the bishop's name right, Paul Morton. You got to watch her and Paul Morton, all, every yes. video they've done, because I'm telling you, you went to his church and took completely over and was selling CDs at the same time. I said, you know what? You better get your hustle on. <laughs> come on. All right. Yes. Well, thank you. Well, Leandra, come back anytime. I will. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so oh, much. And I promise you, we're we going we gonna to figure right, out you. a Mother's Day or Gospel Brunch here in LA to get you to perform something because I want my friends, I want my people to be able to witness that 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 power and that energy because it's it's special. So I, I gave you my word. We're going to figure that out too. That's what's up. I'm ready. All right. I'm ready. All right. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs>